Hello kids, Patrick Livingston of easyanimalstodraw.com and today we're going to be drawing this animal. The German Shepherd. Now we start our German Shepherd by drawing in four marks for the large circle which will represent his shoulders and chest. And we start this by drawing lightly little dots to trace the shape of the circle and once we've done that we can go back in and draw in the circle with more confidence that it's going to be approximately correct and it only needs to be approximately correct you don't have to worry about drawing a perfect circle it's not a circle drawing competition um, the important thing is that it's approximately circular and much more important is that the size of the circle is correct and the position of the circle is correct in relation to the other circles. Now we're drawing the much smaller circle for the hips because the German Shepherd is rather famous for having large shoulders and small hips. Now the circle for the head. Again, the important thing is not that it's a perfect circle but that it's the right size circle and the right distance from the large circle for the shoulders and chest. In fact, the exaggeration of the shoulders in relation to the hips can often give older German Shepherd dogs back problems, just as many humans have back problems. Rather large triangles for the ears. And a small semicircle as a guide for the muzzle. A line across by the third of the way down will help us when we put in the eyes. And now we join up the circles. In this instance to get the neck, now the back, and the belly shape, the front legs, starting with the leg farthest away, and the nearest front leg, which as usual goes well up into the chest. Furthest away hind leg, and the nearer leg, the nearer hind leg. And the tail. German Shepherd has got rather a a wolf-like large bushy tail. Now it's time to start the drawing and our little guideline there across across the circle for the head is very useful in placing the eyes. As you can see the eye has got a small white circle indicating a reflection of light. Now the nostrils of the nose And the mouth. The ears extend out over the triangle, but they're a little bit rounder at the top than the pointy triangles we drew in as guides. You can imagine with ears like this, the German Shepherd has, must have excellent hearing. Drawing the paws with the claws. A 
relatively short legs for such a large dog. German Shepherds can stand as high as 26 inches at the shoulder. Now that now the rear claws, the rear foot and claws. And the far hind leg. Now I've, I've made a mistake here in the far hind leg, which I've corrected in the very final drawing you'll see in this video. But essentially I've made the the area between what is the dog's heel and the foot too short on the back leg. And you'll see it being fixed in the final final drawing. That can happen. Sometimes you do a drawing and you don't notice a mistake until you finish the drawing. It's only afterwards and you look back on it. Because while you're in the drawing itself, uh, sometimes you don't notice things. Now we're getting this is my favorite bit where you remove the drawing guide and restate the parts of the drawing that you've rubbed out, as is always happens when you remove the drawing guide. And then you get the rather magical appearance of the dog without its underlying drawing guide structure, which for me I always find a rather magical moment. If you look carefully at the hind legs, you'll see that the far hind leg looks too short. The space between the foot and the bend in the back leg, which is the dog's heel in effect. Okay, so now the nose. Reach the shading stage of the drawing. Detail around the eyes, something of an eyebrow effect. The muzzle of the German Shepherd is darker, the front of the head, is, the muzzle in particular, is darker than the rest of the head. The muzzle is quite dark and the rest of the head is a kind of tan colour. The German Shepherd dog was developed by a German cavalry officer, Captain Max von Stefanitz. And he decided with some other like-minded breeders to develop uh, a kind of super dog from all the various German shepherd dogs, the different types from region to region, they were all a little different. And uh, he produced what we know as the German Shepherd Dog today. Uh, I grew up in Northern Ireland uh, knowing it as an Alsatian, which was a name given, it to, given to it during the First World War, whenever all things German were frowned upon. And so the name was changed. Alsace is a part of France now but it changed hands between Germany and France in 1870 and again in 1914. So people, it's on the border between France and Germany. Anyway, uh, in developing this amazing dog, which is known for its intelligence and ability to be trained, and you can see it's actually, it's not that far away from a wolf in appearance. 
but today it's used it's probably the dog most used by police around the world and also generally as a guard dog because of its intelligence and I guess various agility, speed, stealth and the overall air of firm authority the dog possesses. So now back to the drawing I'm shading in uh, the chest and neck area to give both a feeling of the, the coat of the animal and something of the strength of the front. But apart from the large jaws and large ears, kind of, uh, sort of wolf-like, the other distinctive feature is the comparatively short legs at the front, the very large chest, and then the small hips at the back. As I mentioned before, it can lead to, it often leads to hip problems in, uh, in uh, older German Shepherd dogs. You can see from the drawing on the top left that the, the back of the dog is considerably darker than the chest area. So it's going to be a fair bit of graphite laid down there to get that darkness correct. Back into the muzzle. Adding detail in the muzzle. And again, just like the back, the muzzle is considerably darker than the rest of the head. You have to patiently build that up, adding layers of graphite until it's dark enough. German Shepherd dogs became popular in America in the early 1900s thanks to, in part, to the adventures of canine movie stars like Rin Tin Tin and Strongheart. German Shepherd Dog was also used by military all over the world, as well as, as, well as the police. So here we're building up the, rather I'm building up the, the dark back. It takes quite a bit of work. To get the contrast right, to get the, to add enough graphite to, to darken. Because you're going from a white page to really quite dark. Again, as I've mentioned before in other videos, this video is speeded up to twice the speed at which I actually did the drawing. So feel free to pause the video at any time. Don't let the video get ahead of you. And take your time in shading. Patience, as you probably know, is a virtue. Uh, and it's better to take it slowly and patiently than trying to do it too quickly. Never work so fast that you're losing your feeling for the uh, the drawing. Now again, uh, as I mentioned before, I made a mistake with this foot that I'm working on at the moment and I didn't notice that the bottom section between what is the dog's heel in effect and its foot was a little too short. Look carefully at the final drawing um, and you'll see that I've corrected that. Now the tail is not so dissimilar to the wolf. All dogs, of course, have been bred from wolves originally, all breeds. It's hard to believe when you think of some of the 
very tiny dog breeds, but they all came from the, the wolf. I'm going to say the, the, this dog, it's much easier to imagine this dog coming from the wolf, the German Shepherd coming from the wolf, than say a toy poodle. It's quite amazing the degree to which breeding has changed the, the shape and characteristics of, of dogs when you think that they all came from the, the wolf. Now, of course, the difference between the wolf and the German Shepherd is that the wolf is, has comparatively long legs and a much smaller body, even though the shape of the head and the, the coat is not so different. But the legs, because wolves need to be efficient at roaming large distances before they find their prey. Um, and so it's much more efficient for them to have long, slim legs and a, a rather finer body. They work as a, they work in a pack, so no individual dog has to be incredibly powerful. Whereas you can imagine a German Shepherd dog, one German Shepherd dog by itself, might have to see off more than one wolf to protect the flock. So I guess you could describe a German Shepherd dog as a kind of super wolf. At the same time, of course, they have to have a temperament that's easy to control by the shepherd. The shepherd must be able to control the dog easy, easily. The dog has to be intelligent and respond to commands. I'm using my heavier pencil here. So I want to lay down quite a bit of graphite here to make the contrast, the distinguishing feature of the, the German Shepherd, being that contrast between the color of the, the muzzle and the, the rest of the head and the back and the rest of the body. As always, you can find uh, downloadable PDF files to help you with the beginning of your drawing uh, at easyanimalstodraw.com, which is my website. And you can find many more animals to draw there. And if you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see some more videos, you can subscribe and smash the bell, as they say, or ring the bell, whatever, uh, to get notifications of future videos. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. When you're doing subtle work like this, hold the pencil in a very light way. There you go. As you can see, if you look at that back foot, the far away back foot, you can see I've fixed the problem, corrected the problem, so it looks a little better now.